Next question is from Mr. Dave O.C. What does the behind the scenes of creating a MAPS program look like? For instance, <laughs> how long is the writing process, common stumbling blocks, trials on multiple people, etc.? Which program was the hardest to create? The, this this is probably some of my fondest memories of, I agree. of yeah. Mind Pump. Nostalgia. Is, is creating uh, programs. Now, the first program was MAPS Anabolic. I created that one. Every single one after that. We all wrote together and we developed this this process, which is really interesting. It started with the next program we created, which is Math Performance, where we would rent a house and it usually had to be like an hour or two away. And this became like, in hindsight, we started saying, oh, this is the way we, we do it. But we'd, we'd have a house one or two hours away and we'd drive to the house and in the drive, we'd have this great debate and conversation about mm -hmm. what the program should look like, things that we need to look out for. Doug would be in the back and he'd have a, a pen and paper. And I, Doug, have you saved these books with notes and stuff? Everyone. Like, yeah. Oh, that's and, cool. Oh, awesome. I can't. We got to look at these at some point, right? Yeah. And it's just, he's just scribbling in the back, right? And I'm yelling and Adam's yelling and Justin's, you know, piping up and we're just having a blast. At some point, a joint comes out and we'll smoke a little weed. <laughs> and then the creativity really gets crazy. Uh, then we get to the house and what we do is we we sit and we write this program for, uh, usually it's about a day of creating and writing the whole workout program. And it goes through a couple iterations before we're, we're, we're satisfied with the workout that we've written. But that's kind of the process. Well, and the and the and to address the part about trials on multiple people, that's all the years of experience for yes. each of us individually. Yeah. What was gr what's great is that we're all uh, very different. I mean, we train ourselves different. We've had different experiences with clients, yet all of us have trained tons and tons of people. So when we decide what an ad adaptation is that we're going to go after, so for example, like you're talking about performance. So, And a lot of times we would head up not even certain on what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. We just know, hey, it's time for us to create a program. The Part of the conversation is what is our audience looking for? What do we think is the next progression from what we've written before? Yeah. So there's a lot of that. And then all of a sudden it, like, we figure out, okay, this is the direction we're going to go. This is the avatar, the client we're thinking of that we want to build this for. And I remember performance was really, at that time, of the podcast was early on, we were really hammering CrossFit. Yeah, that was an answer to that. Right? We were yeah. really hammering CrossFit, and you know, the and the pushback we got was what people felt. Oh, I've just my mobility feels so good, and it's such great functional training, and I love the challenging work. And so, this is what we were hearing from our audience: like, okay, we want to address this. Yeah. If we had a client who wanted that type of an adaptation that you get from CrossFit training, but we were all anti the programming of of CrossFit, how would we design a program? MAPS Performance was really an answer to mm -hmm. that. That's how that program was decided. Then the exercise order and what what we what days and all that stuff is like that's the day of like arguing. You know, yeah. we have, well, we all have our different backgrounds and strengths and like uh, you know what we've applied to you know our, our different clientele and uh, you know and that's one of those things you see it in the programs you see how you know, each one of us consider very specific things that, you know, are sort of, uh, you, you know, non-negotiables for us. And, and, and two, this is what makes for the, you know, the, the quality of the programs go up because there's more considerations that need to be had for your average person. And so that's where we have a lot of the debate and discussion. Well, well, I had athletes, you know, that would do this and I'd warm them up this way and I'd have them do these type of mobility, you know, exercises. And then we discuss that. And then, uh, well, I used this and I saw, you you know, a physical therapist uses, this and I thought that was brilliant. And then, you know, we all have this sort of discussion, which then, you know, narrows it down to what's going to be the most effective uh, introduction to that type of pursuit. Yeah, and, and, it's, yeah. a, it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of talking, standing on tables, <laughs> demonstrating exercises, arguing. Useless graphs. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes we would get stuck on like a, that was like just me. we'd get stuck on a, on a phase or something and it would just, it would be like four hour, four hour debate yeah. and discussion. We'd have to take a break and we'd come back and then Doug would write it all out and we'd look at it on the, on the table and, oh wait, this doesn't make sense. This has to fall. It's a lot of fun. As far as the most challenging to create, yeah. it's a hands down maps prime. Hands yeah. down. Well, yeah, most difficult, but most rewarding. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And here's why it was so challenging. So, you know, we all trainers with lots and lots of experience, right? So we all train people for two decades or more. And we wanted to create a program where people could assess themselves and then determine the best priming movements that they did before they worked out for their body. Now, here's the challenge. It's extremely individual. 
So when you're writing a program for people to work out, you, you know, it's fine if you write general workout programs that will work with most people. But when you're talking about an assessment and specifically training or priming your body for an exercise, that's very it's very different from person to person. Yeah. Now we knew assessments because it's what we did with clients, but I'm like, I can't how could we possibly teach the average person or fitness fanatic how to assess themselves? This is like a whole class by itself. Like you know, there's posture and movement assessments, and if the body moves this way, you look at this and that. It was just so complicated. And we literally, I, I don't remember, I think it took us a full day and a half of just figuring that part out. We were like so stuck. Yeah. Yeah. And then it hit us to create a, a, a compass where you had three movements. Mm -hmm. Based off those movements, if you couldn't complete the task, then it pointed in the direction right. of, of certain it exercises. sort of a flow chart. It, that, that's it. And then that all came together. I remember we, Doug has the video. We put uh, we had the papers that we wrote on and we put them up on the window. Mm -hmm. Remember? Yeah. That's and then we, I, we sat there and explained it and it was just- That's was, when we were up at the Atlantis, right? That's when we did that one? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we were up at the Atlantis and you had those big windows and we had all this stuff all taped up on the window. Those, and you know, and then after that, there's a lot, even when we decide, okay, this is the program, there's a lot of like minor changes along the way, right? Yes. As we start to- shoot and film and we start to see it in place and, and then go through it. We're going like, okay, I like yeah. how this feels. Let's change. We were this too look. creative with this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, prime prime was like, so the thing I remember, prime. Well, you know, what's cool too. I'd look talking about this is kind of, you know, fun going down memory lane here. You know, what's interesting is, uh, you know, Sal, obviously he wrote anabolic all alone. So that's obviously his baby performance. I really feel like is Justin's baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, even though it was all of us together, it really, I think, uh, pulled out a lot of his strengths uh, that he had. And then aesthetic, I really feel was my baby because I was right in the heart of competing totally. mm -hmm. and building a physique was all what was in my mind at that time. And so it's kind of neat. And then prime is really the culmination of all three yeah, of us. That's a good way. And, totally. and when you think about it, we in, in a perfect world, we would have wrote maps prime first. Because of that, but we we also have a business, right? We had to make money. We had to get this thing going to where we could support the team that we have and everything. And so we were forced to go the direction of, okay, we have to give somebody something they can go apply and go in the gym right away. But we all knew damn well that Prime is where everybody should start because it's exactly how you started every single client. I don't care what your goal was. If you hired me day one and probably day one through like, you know, day 14 mm -hmm. even, it's all assessing stuff. It's yeah. really figuring out that client so that you can really customize a program that that's curtailed to them. Mm -hmm. And that's why Prime really should have been first. And, and you know, here's another part mm -hmm. too. Is when we wanted to create programs that, you know, were not in our realm of expertise. I mean, first off, we could create programs, uh, I feel confident, for anybody, right? But are there realms where it would be better or more, give us be more more integrity to involve somebody who's got direct expertise in that field? And so this is what we did with a lot of our programs. Like Map Strong, we got Robert Oberst to go with us. Mm -hmm. We're going to create this program with an actual strongman competitor and see what happens. You know, OCR was Amelia Boone. You know, she competes in OCR. She's a she's a champion. We did power lift with uh, Pollock, who's a powerlifting competitor, and we were able to take them in, go through the and, and really that was really fun writing a workout program with people who competed and were advanced in those particular areas. That was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, for Dr. Me. Brink for Prime yeah. Pro. Dr. Brink Dr. for Prime Brink. Pro, mm -hmm. right, right. So yeah, I, I, I think that's, uh, for me, it was some of the best memories. I, sure. I do. I miss that part of the business. It was a, a fun time because the company was really just starting and really starting to grow. And there was a lot of, and back then, like that was a lifeline for us to create another program, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So there was that part of like, we had to do this. We had to create it. It was a lot of investment to start. It's expensive to build it. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people may not realize, I mean, you know, it's a digital program that you get. You must think it's really basic. But I mean, every time we write one of those, it's anywhere between thirty and $50,000 in investment on us from everything from the models to the back end support to it, to the videographer, to the editing of all yep. of it. So it's a, it's a, and then also the, the trip to build it and do it and the time frame to get it all done. So yeah, definitely a major process to put it out. This is also why we felt okay with charging a rate that was significantly higher than average. If we, we did our homework too, it's not like we just randomly came across, across this price point where we're at. When you look at digital programs that are sold online, the average price point is $27 to $57. And, you know, and we we had the audacity to go ask for 130 plus for a lot of our program, but we also knew mm -hmm. what we put into it and what they were going to get. And how effective they yeah. were. Right. These are ones that actually, it's not just a workout. Yeah. This one's it's not something you find in a magazine. Right. Yeah. It's way more. 